Hello, gamers. Hi. How are you? It's an audio. I can't hear you. Oh, I know why. Yeah, because you haven't put your audio on. What's it look like behind me? Just like some a woman's bedroom or something? Uh, no, it looks like you're in a dingy hotel room. Hey everybody, Pete here. A bit of context. Over the last few weeks, to celebrate the end of the year and history time reaching half a million subscribers. Victory! Oh, we have victory! We asked you guys to ask us some questions. Today we're going to answer as many of those questions as possible, as well as having a general chat about history time, voices of the past, and history in general on YouTube. Right. Back to me in the past. Well, 2020 nearly has drawn to an end. Uh, the world is obviously on fire, collapsing all around us. But for us, on our YouTube, it hasn't been too bad. It's been all right. It's been all right. I mean, yeah, it's, been, it's, been it's been okay for us, it's actually. Left. No traveling, no going anywhere, but um, lots of videos. Lots of videos. Lots and lots of videos. And a yeah. new channel. So that was exciting, wasn't it? Yeah, it was good. Well, that's the little intro done. Nice. Let's introduce. Um, who are you? My name's David. I'm Voices from the Past, uh, the popular YouTube channel. Uh, now, genuinely forgot. Stop performing, Dave. Just do it. Come on. It's My name's David. I run Voices of the Past uh, and uh, also half run History of the Earth. I'm Pete and I run History Time. And that's all you need to know about that. So we both run History of the Earth. Um, yeah, that's been an exciting one this year. So a year ago, me and you, Dave, we were in the lovely picturesque mountain town of Segovia in Spain, round about a year ago, just under a year ago. Um, hey, that's bonkers. Yeah, anyway. Continue. Yeah, and we, and we had a little meetup. We had a little meetup. I mean, that's the last time we really properly saw each other, really, wasn't it? Um, I mean, we've yeah. done a little bit since, but not much. Uh, but yeah, on that day, we actually made some predictions for the future, and I've got them here. Can you remember, what did you think your prediction was for Voices of the Past at the start of the year? My prediction for Voices of the Past was, um, was conservative. Uh, it turns out, at least it was, turns out it's concerned. I think it was, there were, there were two options. There was the sensible prediction yeah, and the right. extreme prediction. Uh, yeah. And the sensible prediction for Voices of the Past, I think, was 150,000. And the extreme uh, prediction was 200,000 subscribers. So your, re your realistic claim was 180. Um, and your mad claim was 250. Oh, well, that's not quite as exciting then. Uh, well, 300, which is good. 314 or something like that. So that's pretty good. Uh, you're 65 over what you thought you'd be. Mate, that's, that's your mad claim. Tasty. That's good. And yeah, it's been it's been a very very uh, very lucky a very lucky year. I've sort of hit a few sort of lucky boosts, which has been nice. And so my realistic claim was 400,000. My mad claim was 500,000. And history time has just hit 500,000. And when so I started way, the channel... In a, in a way, in comparison with Voices of the Past, that's a failure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've failed. Um, so looking at it, and that's key, why you always want to have low expectations. You want yeah, yeah, absolutely. So then we had Sci-Fi Hub as well, which uh, we, don't, we won't talk about that. But then the Pete Kelly channel as well, the mad claim was 10,000, and that's on 94,000. Yeah, that's very odd. <sighs> So that's madness. And then, of course, something we hadn't predicted at all was History of the Earth, which just appeared out of nowhere. And that's on bloody 65,000. Let me turn that on. Uh, yeah, no, that's gone. That was, uh, that was a real boost, real bonus. And so that's fun as well. Lovely. So there you go. That's, uh, that's the little predictions for the, uh, for the year. Quite exciting. Yeah. Um, so shall we? I've got... 10 questions for you, Peter, uh, that I would like you to answer with these are quick fire questions. Going to do a quick fire question round.
Perfect. So, are you ready, Pete? I'm ready. All right. So these are 10, 10 quickfire questions that I thought I'd... Uh, and you've just got to be... First thing that comes to your head. Favourite video that you've made? Sea Peoples. Most difficult video you made? Sea Peoples. Easiest video you made? Doggerland, probably. Oh, interesting. Uh, most surprising uh, video that you made? Sea and Peoples. Sea Pe okay, well, you can't say Sea Peoples for them. Let's say most surprising video that uh, you were surprised by what you discovered in your research, perhaps, or something like that. Um, what happened to Britain's last hunter-gatherers? Oh, wow. Uh, so in three, sent in three words, what happened to them? Mostly died out. Oh, enormously surprising, Pete. I could but but the mostly is the yeah. interesting part, because they didn't all die out. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, there we go. Go check it out. Top right corner. Check that out. Um, most disappointing video. It's got to be uh, the Normans in Sicily because it's uh, stinking up my feed. <laughs> stinking up your feed. Oh dear. Video that you uh, forgot you made. Like a video. video you were like, oh, I forgot I made that. Um, the real first crusade. Sardinia. Oh, did you make that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> video that you don't understand why is so successful. Come on, that must be one of them. Don't be, don't be Mr. Cocky Balls. No, I'm just thinking. Um, uh, every Pete Kelly video. Every, okay. <laughs> um, video that was a disaster in every way. Every Pete Kelly bit now. Um, Disaster in every way. Oh, it's a catastrophe. I don't know if any of them have been disasters in every way because I've learned something from everything that I've made. Okay, well, that's good. That's I've, nice. I've enjoyed the journey of all of them, even oh, the right. difficult ones to make. I've enjoyed the journey. Uh, longest video, longest video, see people's so far. Shortest video, shortest video, uh, the real Titus Pullo. And Lucius Varinus, I think, is because it's about three minutes. Well, not not my one of my favourite of your videos is uh, the Trojan War, War, Homer, and the entire Bronze Age collapse. Not yeah, I put a lot in, put a lot into that one. Yeah, he covered that in seven minutes. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd uh, forgotten that I'd actually done that when I went and did Sea Peoples again because I was like, oh, I'm sort of remaking an old video that I've made, except the old video is like just an advertisement. Like, I enjoyed the video, but it's just so, so short. And things have changed so much in the meantime. Because it's like three years difference or so between those two videos, I think. So it's interesting to see the progression there. But yeah, go watch my first video on the Sea Peoples people. There you go, lovely. That's all don't, don't do it, actually. Just watch the new one. That's all, those are all the quick questions I had. All right then, David. So I'm going to ask you some questions now. Right. So, favourite video? Favourite video? Uh... First uh, Japanese person to go to the United States. It's nice. It's conveniently pretty much my most popular. Isn't that every video you've made? That would also be the most recent video I've made. <laughs> yes. Hardest video. Hardest video. We're talking like Ross Kemp levels of hardness here. <laughs> Legendary toughness. Yeah. Oh, that's difficult. I'm probably having a look at the videos. Um, possibly the, the uh, I, I know it was ages ago, but the Magna Carta. If anyone, if if you are one of the seven people that watched that, was really difficult because it's just uh, it's just it's not. You shouldn't make it into a video. It's not. It's no, not no, 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 no. Really, really do a video. Some of it do. Pass the time. So yeah, that easiest video. Easiest video. Uh, the probably one of those uh one of the soviet people going to the united states uh just because i i didn't really it's just such such a great book that i didn't really need to do anything 
I just put together some footage of the United States, put some nice jazzy music on it, and just had a very nice time. So I, yeah, man. I, was, I, I imagine, um, well, I know that when, when something's really well written, it's just a joy to make, isn't yeah. it? just easy peasy and those guys were i remember you were saying they were like the pinnacle of uh soviet literary circles at the time or something they were, yeah, they were and they were very good up as well which is great which is great so, what sorry lol yeah lol. Yeah, yeah, yeah just just meeting meeting hemingway i think that was one of my favorite bits of any of your videos hemingway just oh, yeah, no, no. No, i think i certainly i really enjoyed that and they were just just so easy just a joy to make those were yeah Nice. Uh, most surprising video? Um, the, uh, the, what, the, the future, the, uh, what was it called? Futurist describing the world of 2001. Uh, I was surprised that everybody wanted to watch it so much. Because it's more or less a list. And usually people aren't particularly interested in lists. But apparently it had that, uh, that seemed to be the thing that people were interested in. Yeah. So that was quite nice, nice. I actually, I don't think I watched that one. I need to add that to the list. It's absolutely fine. You yeah. also read, you read like, I'm sure you've watched, uh, you've watched all of my videos, haven't you, Dave? I watched uh, <laughs> that. Uh, I watched the beginning of parts of Sea People. I watched uh, all of Before the Vikings. I remember you saying you enjoyed that one, yeah. Watched the whole thing. Hmm. Before the Vikings was sort of like the first History Time 2.0 video, I think. That was when I sort of stepped it up a bit. And Jericho. I watched all of Jer uh, most of Jericho. Hmm. Yeah. And Dead Sea Scrolls, actually. Oh, Dead Sea Scrolls is a fun one. Where am I now? Uh, d d d a disappointing video. Most disappointing video. Um, so a little disappointed with... I don't want to say anything too recent. Uh, well, some of the some of the videos that are uh, compendiums of other sources, I'm always a bit disappointed because I quite like the idea of having more than one source in a video. People just don't seem to be particularly doesn't really grab people's attention. For example, there was a video about werewolves, which I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed that video. But everybody, uh, well, it wasn't. It just wasn't really people's people's bag. I'm part of the Werewolf Alliance, so so that's why I enjoyed it. Much like your dog-headed men. I lost me some dog-headed men. Don't well, done well for me, the old dog heads. I think you may have spawned some some people to actually, you know, wholeheartedly believe in the concept from your video. Yes, it's always a shame. There's an entire channel. It's like when you get like people searching for Atlantis and then <laughs> yeah. and I am the first thing that comes up and they're like, oh look. And I'm like it's, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> Video you forgot you made. Atlantis. Player on Atlantis, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> now and again, now and again I remember about it when somebody leaves a, a comment explaining how it's in Mauritania. Did very well that video. Did very well. Yeah, people liked it. Nice. Million views? Over a million? Uh, a million billion. Million billion? I don't know, I, don't know. I think uh, good. it yeah, did, did its job, as it were. Yeah, nice. Um, I might put all these videos we've talked about in the description. I might not. Well, I mean, there's... It depends how lazy I'm feeling. Video that you don't know why is so successful. I don't know. Hello, Coco. How about that? It's Coco. What are you looking at, Coco? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Amazing. You can hear that, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Coco, we're... I'm, I'm, I'm on the telly, Coco. What, what are you doing? Ah, she's gone. Oh. Uh, what was the question? A uh, video that you don't know why is so successful. I don't know why it's so successful. Uh, so successful. They're not, none of them are enormously successful. Probably ancient China and Rome. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's, you know, it's interesting, but to uh, the levels to which it, 
it, it was apparently interesting to people, sort of surprised me. Yeah. Yeah, just so people are aware, that was a video that um, had such viral success that it essentially, it kind of started Voices of the Past, really. Like, it started, it made you very interested in doing the channel. <laughs> um, I know that. Um, and it had more virality to it than any History Time video ever. Virility to it than Peter Virility. Kelly. It was a virile. Virile than Peter Kelly. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, ridiculous. Uh, it, 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 uh, uh, I went from, from, from 10,000 subscribers to, no, 20,000 subscribers to 100,000 subscribers in a month. And you were also named the uh, creator on the rise by YouTube for like creator on the rise for by your YouTube that left. week. Yeah, God, that was that was a good week. Was that was yeah, that was a. Uh, I didn't sleep was uh, a little hard to come by. We've all had a moment like that. I, I had um, the Scythians for me was my moment like that, where it suddenly people started watching and, and awesome. it, yeah that's like what what's people what are you up to you guys yeah it's quite terrifying when it happened because i went from something like a thousand subscribers to like ten thousand in a week or something and it was oh, yeah. madness that's more stressful yeah but i'd already released a million videos by that point um yeah, no, that was very strange that was a a month of sort of anxiety yeah absolutely. yeah um history creators out there if if any of you are watching if you're a, a budding youtuber you've just started a channel then potentially this is what you've got to look forward to get one video suddenly smashing it i know i've spoken to quite a few channels where they've had a similar thing where there's been a moment where the, the, the levy is broken yeah so video that was a disaster in every way Let's not go too recent. Uh, uh, let's have a look. Disaster in every way. Well, I mean, I, I'm not unhappy with how the quality of any of the videos. Uh, I would have rathered. I would have rather not have bothered to have made an entire hundred prophecies of Nostradamus if I'd known that everyone's reaction would have been an aggressive shrug. Uh, so that, I mean, I could have done with that, with having, you know, that two days or three yeah. days of my life back. <laughs> yeah. No, because there's, there's, there was no controversy to it. So people just, because if you release a video and it's a little bit controversial, you know, sometimes you get the, people commenting angrily about things and then it sort of yeah, makes it nice. more successful but no there wasn't much for that one longest video nostradamus watching it, it probably feels that way uh, <laughs> japan japan in the west Big oh, of course of course yeah um yeah right, i lo i loved it loved it finished watching it the other day i watched it in a few different segments um yeah That'll be coming out. The second one will be coming out in March, and then hopefully more of the same. Yeah. Uh, so you guys watching, um, go check out Japan on the West. It's very good. It's David's first foray into the world of documentary making. But and who's the who's the writer of it? Come on, big it up. Thomas Lockley. And Thomas. he's the writer of uh, Yasuke, uh, story of Yasuke, uh, African so samurai. Proper published author wrote this one. Yeah, and he is the business. He is yeah. he is the man of the know. He'll be writing more in the future. Yeah, if I've got anything to do with it, absolutely. Excellent. Be plenty, plenty. Um, more yeah. Shortest video. Uh, let's have a goosey gander. <laughs> Shortest video. Was it the advert for History of the Earth? Oh yeah, probably actually. Shortest uh, might be some sort of like. It's probably uh, probably the Roman description of China, or maybe the Darius the Great, the best ah. inscription. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, those were back in the days where views weren't apparently anything I was interested in. Do you know what though? When I was doing my uh, Persian video, the entire history of the Persian Achaemenid Empire, I watched that Darius inscription as as a bit of research. No, oh, or Pat. 
Oh, well, no, no, that's... Uh... Likewise, with the Sea Peoples, I did the same thing. I watched the Medinet Habu inscription by Ramesses III. And very good, very useful. I think now I look at it, actually, it is actually the world's oldest complaint letter. Ah, that's a good one, that. That was actually mildly successful, which is quite fun. Mm. I see that popping up all the time on uh, people share it on Facebook groups and things, and I, I feel very proud when I see it. Um, all right, great. So, okay, let's ask the audience. Okay, Yale Yoon asks, how do you prepare to make a typical primary source video? Do you simply search for a source you want to create a video on and read through it and choose excerpts of it to record for the video? Or do you do some prior research and read up about the source before actually reading it? So you know the context and imperfections slash mistakes of the source. And thank you, I really enjoy your channel. I'm very glad I randomly bumped into it earlier this year. Oh, lovely. No, he's, and he's uh, Yale has left, uh, if the pronunciation is Yale, Yale has left a few nice comments. So thank you, Yale. Um, in general, I start but with an idea and then try and find the source to back up the idea. Uh, so for example, what is an interesting perspective and how, and then I would potentially sort of Google that or uh, find myself going down a Wikipedia hole, just clicking, 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 or potentially finding a, a, sort, a collection of sources and finding an interesting source within that, or potentially reading a book and uh, seeing in the references what sources are related to that. Um, but more often than not, it will be an idea of a an interesting perspective to hear on a particular historical event. So for example, wouldn't it be interesting to think or hear what the Soviet Union would think of the United States? And then I set about investigating and finding a text for that, finding the most interesting text, finding a text that's easily obtainable potentially, maybe makes it easier. Uh, and then once I've got that, text it could be an extract which is slightly easier it could be an entire book which indicates that i have to sort of read through and find passages which are potentially the most interesting and also the most interesting because they show the perspective of that one particular culture on the other culture um and in regards of mistakes if there are any mistakes in the in the in the text i'm not quite sure what you mean by mistakes but uh the text is the text and maybe maybe he means um, sort of like historical inaccuracies. That's fine. I mean, not fine. I mean, they're but they're they're all good, aren't they? I mean, you just need to put them in because that's interesting in itself. Absolutely, and that's the whole idea of the whole thing. I mean, that's why this particular text is interesting. If you're hearing Japan's perspective on America, if you're hearing a Japanese person explain to you in 1840 what the capital of America is like, it's not going to be exactly correct. And I don't think, hopefully people don't come to Voices of the Past for a factual descriptions of countries of that period of time. Uh, they need to be aware that it's fed through the lens of the writer and his biases and his uh, perspective on what he's seeing. Yeah. And that's yeah. part of the fun. Good question. Good answer. Uh, all right, let's give you a quesi. Uh, let's have a look here. Around. What made you start your YouTube channel? And that's from um, Connor Devereaux. So, uh, yeah, there was quite a lot of uh, questions of this ilk. Um, couldn't answer all of them, but they sort of grouped them all into Connor. Um, what made me start the YouTube channel? Well, I didn't want to work in the jobs that I was working in anymore because they were really, really dull. And I was already spending all of my time reading about history and writing about history. So I thought, why not just try and pursue it as a career, really? But um, why? But, but then why YouTube? Because, I mean, pursuing history as a career, you wouldn't automatically be like... Well, I tried every other avenue <laughs> besides being a teacher. Um, really, it was, it was, I was at the end of my... I mean, I didn't, I didn't really watch YouTube. I wasn't really into YouTube before I started on it. Um, I was just doing lots of writing. What's that? You love PewDiePie. Well, you know, 
Um, yeah, so I was writing about, I was writing sci-fi at the time and I was also writing a bit of history. Um, and then I basically realized that I found the channel History with Hilbert and I started watching that. And then I found, I think, Kings and Generals, before they were called Kings and Generals, started watching that, watched a bit of Baz Battles. Um, I think they used to be called, maybe they don't want me to divulge, divulge this, but they, they were, it was just two guys' names. It was so-and-so and so-and-so, and so, yeah. And I think they did gaming stuff, possibly before they were doing the documentaries. Um, so yeah, found, found those guys. Sorry, Sorry. the people who've gone over from Total War, haven't they? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, found those guys and sort of realised, oh, maybe I could give that a go um, and just sort of bashed out a video and then enjoyed doing it. And then, yeah. Kept going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was never, I mean, it was never actually, I never had the idea of becoming a YouTuber. I don't know. It just sort of, it was a means to write about history. Nice. Um, another question for David. So we've got Marvin Becker. If you had one hour to talk to any historical figure, who would it be? Uh, can I speak all languages? And how do you translate the texts is another one, but I think that's maybe... I think that was the same from Marvin. Marvin just doubled up his questions. Yeah. Uh, if I sp speak to one historical figure for two hours, who would it be? So presumably you've got a universal translator and you can just yeah. speak to them. Oh, God, that's a bloody huge question, isn't it? Depends who would be quite, you know, who'd be interesting chat. I feel like if I started talking to like Buddha or Jesus, I don't know how. You wouldn't come back. Like, eh? You wouldn't come back. You'd just stay there with them. Oh, but I don't know. Would they be that interesting? I feel like to, to really know what Jesus is talking about, I might need to know a little bit more about Judaism. I don't know, man. I, I think. Assuming these guys are real historical people, which, you know, there's, there's a good argument they are. I mean, uh, surely their appeal was their ability to be able to speak to all people. Okay. All right. In that case, I'd have an hour with... You can cut this. <laughs> I'm going to drag this out. Do, 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 zoom in on your face. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, let's, let's, I reckon Buddha. Buddha would be good. Buddha would be a good, cra good crack, I think, because Buddha is almost a bit like uh, a bit like Russell Brand. Hear me out here. Hear me out here, because because he, he was uh, he was a guy who'd reached the pinnacle of success in his field. He was a he was a prince, and he had everything. And then he gave it up to try and um, sp spread like the word of, of peace and stuff. I, like know, I, Brand, I have to speak to Russell Brand for an hour. That might spoil the Buddha. <laughs> uh, all right. And let's give you a question. What music do you listen to? Um, when I'm making videos, I will listen to pretty much exclusively the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. Um, quite often, just one song over and over and over again. So I'll put the theme of Gondor on just repeatedly, or I'll put the theme of Rohan on just repeatedly. Give you that, um, buzz. Give you that buzz. And then it gets you into the frame of mind of, of when, you, when you're researching a particular topic, you're like, oh, yes. So Anglo-Saxons, I love to put a bit of Rohan on. Anything to do with, quite often it's the, Roman, the late Roman Empire, I'll put Gondor on. But also, Boards of Canada is, a, is one that I listen to a lot when I'm writing. Um, ambient sort of electronic stuff. Hans Zimmer. Film soundtracks. I, I think I used to, I used to vaguely like listen to bands and stuff, but since I've started doing History Time, that's literally my life. So I just listen to what I'm listening to when I'm researching. Which yeah, is I've got no interest. Listening to anything that's got lyrics. Yeah, no, I'm do I've, I don't do lyrics. He got lyrics. I don't do lyrics. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I grew up on Red Hot Chili Peppers, Rage Against the Machine, all that. Too late, Pete. All the good I've stuff. Already got you wrong. <laughs> but yeah, film soundtracks. Last of the Mohicans soundtrack. Fantastic. Nice. Yeah, I like listening to like classical Japanese music. Classical music is great. Really atmospheric stuff is what is what I'm into. 
All right. Uh, hit me up with another another question. Sun's come out as well, so this would be a, a lovely sort of atmosphere for this quesi. So Noob the Dude says, what do you think about pineapple pizzas? Getting into the really important nitty gritty stuff here. Key, key question. And it, it depends what else is on the pizza. I wouldn't go for, I'd never go for pineapple. Like, pineapple and ham though. Pretty good. Yeah, it'd be fine. I've got no problem with it. I mean, it just, I'd never choose it. See, I'm a big fan of the savory and sweet. I do like the, uh, I do like the pineapple on a pizza. I do like it. Pineapple's a stringy little number though. Mm. I'd put pear on a pizza. You heard it here first. Oh. Imagine that pear, some real fancy cheese, maybe a walnut. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Okay. Bit of balsamic vinegar on there or something like a, oh dear. Like a salad on a pizza, basically. Mm. That's very nice. No, so usually I just have a, I quite like, um, I like a pepper, I like a pepper on a pizza. I like pepper, I like pepper on a pizza. He likes a pepper on a pizza. I very much like a pepper on a pizza. <laughs> All right, great. Next. Okay. Next. Let's find out ASMR. Uh, I'm curious, what do you think about the future of YouTube or educational content or online education in general? Uh, he mentions that, or she mentions that they feel like channels um, might inspire, like you, channels might, like you might inspire a whole new generation of interest in history and archaeology. So, what are your feelings on that? Big question. Ooh, uh, hopefully, yeah. I mean, that would be that would be amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose that's one of the one of the goals of the channel really is to inspire people to get into these things of themselves and do their own research. Because I think a lot of the problems of our time actually come from people just sort of accepting information what they're told without actually doing their own research um obviously you need to have the tools to be able to work out what is good information and what is bad information but if you're able to do the research for yourself it's amazing so yeah i mean hopefully the whole history sphere on youtube will inspire people to conduct their own research into these things yeah um i think it, i think it can be really good i mean there's a lot obviously youtube is filled with ancient aliens giants madness but when you compare it to the history channel history channel it's way better in my opinion but i mean but if you go to the if you go to general joe public they probably think they're the same thing well this is it yeah ancient aliens is, is, is a bit of a it's just a lot of nonsense <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but no i think i think yeah, youtube it can be great because obviously like I mean, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing now if it wasn't for YouTube. It's, a, it's enabled us to build our careers. Um, and I think also it's nice that you can actually earn a living from YouTube. Yeah. It's a totally independent, creative endeavor that's not completely a meritocracy, of course, no. but is more of a meritocracy than a lot of other creative absolutely absolutely the way i see it it's just a new platform it's like tv it's like radio it's just a, it's just a brand new platform it's still very young still in its early days and we don't know what's going to happen in the future but the kids are watching it people are watching it, yeah but i mean then there's this tiktok starting as well so maybe everybody will just go on to tiktok and we'll all download into the uh into the matrix and when the singularity happens but who knows well, TikTok, the thing is TikTok, that's TikTok, at least three years away TikTok's, tiktok's very very short videos so it's sort of not it's like being like oh mate uh, it's it's the end of lunch everyone's eating crisps it's like it's not really the same yeah it's interesting though because so i i was always led to believe that basically you want to just have things as quick as as quick as possible because people have very short attention spans and uh you know they'll be constantly looking to do something else and also to dumb things down because, you know, people aren't really interested. But then I just made a three hour thing and everyone loves it. Like people have attention spans. People like long form content. And it's just, it's it's just nonsense. You've got, to it's nonsense. People you've, got to sound you've got to sex it up a little. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Nice. What have I got for you? That's if you could, uh, so... I-R-O-H says, if you could choose an era to live in for the rest of your lives, where and when would it be? I'm happy enough now. <laughs> I'd probably choose 500 years in the future 
um, if our society survives and uh, time machines exist? I'd like to be a baby boomer so I can <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. buy a house and then blame the rest of the world for my problems. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and also uh, get to see Hendrix live. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, I feel that must disappoint people because they're like they must be like, oh, maybe they'll say the Roman Empire. Like, oh, hell no! <laughs> right, you go back to the Roman Empire. Right, you're either you're either a pleb, you have nothing, you have no education or anything, or you have one of the most stressful jobs in all of history, doing anything else in the Roman Empire. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm okay. Yeah. To be fair, maybe being a hunter-gatherer would be quite a nice life, although it would be very short. It'd be very fulfilling, and you'd be very free, but it'd be very short, and you could easily just die of like a horrible parasite by yeah, the well, age. There's like a, statistically, you're very you're like one of the leading causes of death or something is just being murdered, isn't it? Or am I? Uh, what in the hunter gatherer period? No, not probably not. There's more. Wow, well, that um, let's ask Stefan Milo. Um, Stefan Milo, <laughs> how would I die? Yeah, oh no, he's Neolithic, probably be offended by saying that. Anyway, moving on, yeah, he might be able to still be able to tell us how we die. <laughs> yeah, uh, all right, I'll give you another quizzy. And this is from Kez Oranyatan. Uh, who is your favourite Roman emperor? Ah, oh, favourite Roman emperor. So, speaking about stressful jobs in history, I might actually say Julian the Apostate. Um, very interesting guy. Julian the Apostate was the nephew of one of the most vicious, murderous emperors of the late Roman Empire. Uh, and Julian was the one relative to survive his culling, basically, of the family. Um, and then somehow managed to sort of like win his uncle's affections and then be, was made his heir. Uh, and he lived a very interesting life. And he was died very young. He was the last... Sorry, David. He was the last pagan emperor. Um, and yeah, he was a bit. He was a bit of an underdog, really, and he and he sort of had everything stacked against him. But he managed to achieve a lot before in the battle against the Persians. He did, yeah, I know this. And he was, and he, uh, yeah, he was. He seemed, he seemed a pretty good guy. But I like Julian the Apostate. He was he was for the uh, ancient philosophers of Greece and things like this, and he was he was against the against those Christians. Imagine that. Imagine your imagine having a second name as the apostate. <laughs> yeah. And he was only emperor for, I think, two, two or three years. Bit, for me, that's a, that's, a, that's a dog shit choice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, the, the classic would be Marcus Aurelius, but it's a bit boring, isn't it? You know, everybody loves Marcus Aurelius. I say. Herod, nice wall. Next. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Um, Alden asks, how did you get into YouTube and what were your goals beforehand? Oh, crumbs. Well, I got into YouTube because you got into YouTube. Uh, originally, I was, we went to Rasca Fria, which is a beautiful place in, in the middle of Spain. Uh, we had a few, a few drinks uh, and we made together uh, a, a, a science fiction audiobook uh, called Dagon. We recorded it that same day, didn't we? We did, after a few tins, and I whispered into a mobile phone stationed in the middle of the room. Uh, famous. Do, do, do the intro for us. Do, do a little bit now. <laughs> Mainly that. <laughs> There's something at the window. <laughs> So I hammed up a bit of that. And then <laughs> gradually, I think Pete just sort of ran out of... Pete had started at Voices of the Past. Pete was convinced at the time that he wanted to go through the entirety 
of ancient texts, sort of chapter at a time, uh, which was which was fine. But then we sort of maybe we sort of suggested together to move on to more standalone videos on that channel. Uh, and then Pete basically sort of ran out of time, more or less, for that channel uh, yeah. because his documentaries became exponentially longer. They did. Um, they did. Uh, and so then sort of palmed it off to me. I continued uh, using sort of software mainly that I downloaded for free from the internet because it's quite fun. And Which you still use today. Hmm? Which you still use today. No, I use Adobe First Cut Premiere Pro Maximum Plus. Same, so, yeah. I definitely don't use iMovie. Oh God. Yeah, we do need to move on to that. Uh, but big shout out, Hit Film Express. And iMovie, you're a bag of shit. iMovie, yeah. IMovie Apple, make iMovie better. Don't forget about it. There is at least one person out there making three-hour documentaries on it. <laughs> iMovie, good Lord. Uh, so yeah, and then and then before that, I wanted to be an actor or generally someone that had money, uh, <laughs> rather than a poor person like I would have been as an actor. So there you go. Um, but I think right. this, this certainly scratches my need uh, to uh, my my performative need and also the entertainment need and also doing something of mild value. Okay, great. Yeah, nice. Let me give you a... Uh, Henry Young, what are your favourite historical films? Favourite historical films? They're not necessarily the most historically accurate. I'll say that. I love... Not a film, but I love Spartacus, Blood and Sand. Great, great stuff. Lovely bit of Romans stabbing each other. Brilliant. Okay. I love Braveheart. I don't care. I don't care, guys. I love it. It's great. Braveheart. Brilliant. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> wildly inaccurate, but great fun. I love Gladiator, obviously. Again, pretty inaccurate, but for the feel of the era, I think it's quite spot on. I think the just uh, the atmosphere of ancient Rome. Uh, yeah. Great battles as well. Great battles. Last of the Mohicans. Just really stunning cinematography. Rome, amazing TV show. Dances with Wolves with Kevin Costner. Great historical epic. Mm. Um, yeah, anything from the 90s, really. 90s was a real... I mean, that's when I, that's when I was growing up and that's when I was getting into history. So uh, it's a bit of nostalgia factor as well for me. Although I do really enjoy... Um, I do really enjoy like a nice historically accurate one. I'm very much looking forward to The Dig with Ralph Fiennes, which is about oh, yeah. the Sutton Who, Sutton Who discovery, which is coming out on Netflix. Yeah. Let us both enjoy, just for this moment, that I, we just received a comment. You can enjoy reading this, Pete. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. Of course, women have always been respected in science. I wonder what uh, Hypatia of uh, Alexandria would have to say about that when she was uh, beaten to death by a mob because she was uh, a woman who was, who was into learning. Um, Fake news, mate. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I also really enjoy films about World War II, I have to say. Really like a good war film. Defiance with Daniel Craig is very good. Um, the Pianist and all that stuff. I like stuff about the... Um, the Penis? The pe the p you can cut me, cut me out saying that about yeah. that whole... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah World War II films, good. Um, I like... I also like, um, there's some good films about the Korean War and there's some great Vietnam films. And generally, like 20th, 20th century uh, stuff is very interesting. Not that I've done it on the channel, but I would like to one day. All right, moving on. So where do you find your sources? Uh, I find my sources uh, aggressive, aggressively Googling ideas. I find my sources a little bit Wikipedia binges. I find my sources on archive.org uh, and I find my sources uh, sometimes on the Hathi Trust. Nice. Next. 
There you go. Just uh, basically just late night Googling is, is usually what sort of finds a form up for the way in. Uh, what gave birth to your love of history in the first place? And that's from, hang on, that is from uh, Den Rotesharn. So um, really just being lucky and having great parents who would take us to castles and stone circles and things. Yeah. You didn't necessarily enjoy it as much as I did. No, I did. I did. Don't, don't, we'll have to cut that. So that people... yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, having great parents who would take us to castles and stone circles as a very young child, which inspired the love of history. And then I played Age of Empires, Civilization, um, and watched TV. Uh, right, give me another one. Will you provide your narrations as public domain in the future? Yeah, I mean, uh, on no. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube, I'd rather to maintain the sort of the creative copyright on them, I suppose. It's an interesting concept thinking about what's going to happen to YouTube in the future and whether public domain it will even be relevant anymore. Yeah, I don't really know. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how, yeah, how, to, how to respond to that. I suppose I don't necessarily own the copyright on some of the texts that I've spoken, but I do own the copyright on my voice, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Next. Who is your favourite, jo jo uh, Joan Remnant, who is your favourite historical figure? Favourite historical figure. I love an underdog. I love a, uh, I love a self-made person who manages to rise up through the ranks. So there's quite Michael a few. Gove. Yeah, like Michael, Michael Gove. No. I prefer people who aren't forest goblins. Um, quite a few Roman freedmen who were freed slaves who managed to like rise up in society. I quite like those guys. I quite like um, uh, the first Chinese emperor. Nah, not so much. Not a big he was, fan. Of that. No, he was. A, he was. A, I think he was a self-made man. Yeah, but he was also a megalomaniacal. Uh, that is that. That's not a word. A maniacal dictator who killed millions. Isn't he? Qin, first emperor of China. Pretty bad guy. I could be. I'm not 100% sure, actually. It's a good question. But he was a self made One of them was a self made man. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd imagine this or guy was. Han or somebody. But he would like kill people who looked at him and stuff. It was like very, not very nice. Who do I like? I like, I like, um, I really like Ibn Battuta. I love his curiosity. I love that he just wanted to see what was going on in the world and he just went everywhere. And he also had really quite good jobs everywhere that he went as well. Like, like lots of different careers. He ended up in India just being like um, an advisor at the court of the Indian um, ruler at the time. Almost got into the Indian ruler's bad books and managed to get a, a transfer to China to go and be like a diplomat to China. Really interesting guy. Bombing it all over the place. So he was obviously very charismatic and he was very good at just like adapting to wherever he went. He was a people person. Yeah. Michael Gove of his day. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Um, Marco Polo as well, similar sort of guy. That's all Next. fake though, mate. Yeah. <laughs> all right, this is my one for you. How long does it take to make a video? Good question. Uh, hours a minute oh wow that's a you've you've calculated well maybe one and a half to two hours per minute uh including everything including thinking about it endlessly <laughs> yeah. um tweaking it editing it recording it editing the source finding the right source getting with the rights uh having a breakdown about it and then finally releasing it <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. For me, it's simply too long. Too long. Just long. Long. Years. Years and years. Sometimes I'll write a script and then it'll take three years for the video to be made. And then it'll be about the Normans. No one watches. No one gives a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> one of the famous trilogies of history time. Three entire videos on the Normans, none of which were about fucking William the Conqueror. Nah, sure. Well, 
once upon a time. He's the most boring Norman of the lot, to be honest. Nah, he's not. He's interesting. But there are more interesting figures. Yeah. Um, yeah, talking of self-made people, I quite like some of the Normans. I, I, I find them quite interesting, quite intriguing. Okay, Psycho Bartus. Do you know where penguins keep their treasure? Penguin Island. Uh, what is... Uh, give me a give me a top historical goof or oddity, and that is from Daniel Ruiz. So something that really sticks in my mind was when I was at university and uh, I was in the library, and I basically just came across one of the popes was killed when he was uh, crushed by his secret laboratory when he was doing experiments in there, and I just loved that. There's just this nutter pope who's just like a scientist working away in his lab. Great. Popes are fun. Yeah. Oh, and then there was also Pope John, who was may have really been Pope Joan. Uh, it's like There's the idea of just getting, with, um, a man yeah. and just getting away with it. <laughs> had, a tr had a trial for his predecessor, who was dead. So they dug up the body and like sat in a chair and had like a full trial for a dead body. Madness. Yeah, that's quite common in history, actually. That sort Both of life. Yeah. Are there any subjects or areas that you avoid making content about and why? That's a good question. Um, I'm a little anxious about making any anything in the sort of past 1930 um, because YouTube is a little pernickety about demonetization. Same. And I know, I mean, it would be, I mean, that shouldn't really affect my choices, but if YouTube de demonetize the video, it's not simply a case of money that will also simply kill the video and people just won't watch it. So it's kind of like a self-defeating sort of yeah. martyrdom that doesn't educate or help anybody. Yeah, YouTube's a money machine. It's pure and simple. So they will so, only promote things that are monetized. So uh, that, that sort of, a little sort of questionable, questionable about and anything really that has an aggressive or anything just like really just super super racist <laughs> basically yeah anything that, uh, makes yeah. sense it makes sense similar sort of thing here for me okay viking mai tai asks if you had a time travel ship and could watch any great battle from the sky which one would you choose and why hands down it would be the battle of Brunanburh in 937 so i can find out where it is definitively and then profit just go digging exactly digging exactly. for coins build a museum on it done nice nice yeah lovely um good i think that is all we have time for on account of the fact i would like to have lunch yeah uh i did have a thing that says trivia what do we what did well neither of us made any trivia questions <laughs> pete i'm glad that your preparation for this after we had the conversation yesterday was put down the pad that you'd already written on and then up oh, we'll kill an filler. look at that look at the, all the ideas we have for sci-fi hub nah one a month apparently well, it's still there. It's got like 7,000 subscribers. This channel has 2,000 subscribers. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, well, anyway, yeah. Once upon a time, we'll be able to travel again and do some more uh, travel vlogs and things like that. Good to know that you're correctly using once upon a time there. <laughs> Mate, I thought you were a historian. Do you understand that the, the past and the future are different things? Hey, I haven't had breakfast yet. Right. But he hasn't had breakfast, right? And it's 1.30. UK time. Unbelievable. Don't um, eat food, guys. It's, uh, it's, it's a lie. So, right, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, have a lovely uh, New Year's. Uh, thanks for chatting with me, Pete. I've now, I've now taken over this. David is now uh, the Michael Parkinson of the, the conversation. So, yeah, no, thank you, everybody, for watching our channels. We really, really, really appreciate it. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's, it's incredible uh, that we can actually pursue these things full time. But yeah, we love doing it and we're really excited for next year. We're going to come up with a load more stuff for you. Yeah, absolutely. Best stuff 
I've ever made for sure. What would you say, David? I'm going to take it down a step. <laughs> David's going to make it less good. So uh, go less subscribe. Good. <laughs> less good. Subscribe. Don't forget to like it. Voice of the past. Worse than it was before. This <laughs> is from the past on MySpace. Amazing. All right. We're out. See ya. Nice one, mate. Catch you later.